just a brief forward here. As always, the landscape of stable diffusion, generative neural networks, and AI is changing fast these days. So some of these informations here might be outdated by the time of publication. If so, please just comment, let me know in the comments or let us know in the comments and share your findings. And also let me know if I mess up and I'm totally wrong here. So let's get going. When crawling out from under my rock recently, not only did I notice this stable diffusion thing, but just a few days ago, I also saw the emergence of Lensa or the hype around Lensa, which is an app where you can upload 10 to 20 images of yourself and it'll generate a bunch of square profile pics resembling your face in different settings and different styles. Now, if you're like me, you're interested how that whole thing works. And I think Stable Diffusion and Dreambooth is what's behind it. And Dreambooth is a rather easy way to train an AI model on a certain subject, such as your face. So if you want to be cheap and spare your six or whatever dollars, and instead want to invest 2,000 to 4,000 bucks into graphics cards and hardware, and rather like tinkering around with algorithms, this is how we can build the same functionality by using free tools. Like in our last video, we start out with Automatic 1111's Web UI for Stable Diffusion. And in order to be able to easily train this to my face, I need a few things. I need a training data set, so a bunch of images of myself, which in my case are these 12 beautiful random images that have been cropped and resized to be 512 by 512 pixels. And then we need Dream Booth, which enables us to train and modify Stable Diffusion's underlying model in order to be able to generate pictures, images that contain whatever it's been trained on, in this case, my face. So in order to install that, I wanna to go to extensions here, go to available and then load from. This will load a list of available extensions for Stable Diffusion's web UI. In our case, I wanna install Stable Diffusion here. So let's just click install. And after a while that says installed. So when I go to installed here, I can see the Stable Diffusion Dream Booth extension. However, it's not showing up up here where it should show up. So one thing we could feel tempted to try is to go to settings, scroll down here and hit restart Gradio and refresh components, which in this case did not work. And there is no Dream Booth extension visible up here. So let's just restart Stable Diffusion here by just closing the command window down where we launched it from and go to the install directory where we install Stable Diffusion and either launch the webui.bat or in my case, the webui-user.bat. So double click on that and I'll see my command window popping open here, starting Stable Diffusion. So let's wait a bit for that until it's started. And now that it's started, let's just refresh our browser here. And now we have Dream Booth up here in our extensions. So let's click on that and start training it. So the first thing I wanna do is create a new model, which I can do in here. And I will specify a source from which I'll create the model. In my case, the Stable Diffusion 2.0 model here. And let's name this my portrait. You can name this as you like. I'm just gonna go with that one. Then I'll make sure that I have the DDIM as a scheduler selected here, and then I'll check create. And in our command window, you can see what's happening here. So we're loading a checkpoint, and then from this, creating our new model. So now that has been created and it's showing up up here. So whatever is selected here in this model tab is what we're gonna train. And for training, I wanna set up a few parameters in here. First, I wanna set the number of training steps per training image that I have. And if I open up my portraits folder here, you can see those are 12 items. And when training for faces, the general wisdom of the internet is to have Dream Booth train 400 steps per image, which in our case means 1200 steps. However, in here, I'll just enter the training steps per image, which is a hundred. Now, in our case, I don't wanna save a preview or a checkpoint each epoch and wanna make sure that the resolution is set to whatever my training image's resolution is. In my case, 512 by 512, that worked nicely. Then a very crucial setting, which determines how well your model will be working is the learning rate up here. And personally, I like to reduce this a tiny bit in order to not to overtrain my model to this value, which is the one with six leading zeros here. Then down here, let's drop down the advanced settings here. And down here, I wanna use the 8-bit Atom, which uses a cleverly hacked optimizer that instead of using 32-bit numbers, only uses 8-bit numbers while retaining most of the precision of those 32-bit numbers. So it saves a bit of VRAM. Also in order to save a bit of VRAM for training because it's gonna be heavy on your graphics card's RAM usage. And I'm using a 4090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM and still sometimes are running out of VRAM. So the next trick to reduce the VRAM usage is to set the precision to FP16. And then depending if you've got it activated here, choosing Xformers. In order to activate this and be able to have access to this, what you wanna do or what you can do is in our installation folder, right click on the webuiuser.bat, click on show more options and then edit this, which will open up a notepad 
And this is the web UI user.bat. And in here, in this set command line underscore args, you can add command line prompts, command line arguments with which Stable Diffusion's web UI is going to start. And in order to install and activate the X formers, you want to add minus minus X formers here. Like so. Then save this. And then if you want to use this, just close this down and restart your web UI by closing again this command window and then double clicking on the web UI user.bat. And here we can see that we are launching the web UI now with the argument Xformers. And now we can refresh this page here, go back to Dream Booth, and again select my portrait. That's the model I was about to train. And then go to parameters. And in here, let's make sure we set the same parameters as we did. So no checkpointing, no previews, reduce the learning rate, check the resolution that it's set to 512 by 512 or whatever your training images have in resolution. And then under advanced, Let's check use 8-bit Atom, let's check FP16, and let's use the X formers here. All right, back to the top of these settings here and into the concepts, and that's where I can set up the training. So you can train up to three what's called concepts, that means individual training data sets simultaneously. In our case, I only want to train one, my face. And the first thing I have to do is point it to a dataset directory, which is the directory in which my training images are saved. So let's just copy this path up here and paste it down here. Now, this also has a provision for a classification dataset directory. Now, what is that? This mainly applies if you want to train faces, human faces. And a classification or regularization makes sure that not every instance, for example, in this case of a photo of a man would result in my face. And you don't have to use it. I had great success without using this as well. In some cases, I had the feeling that it resulted in a marginal increase in quality. So if you want to include that, what you need is a set of images that in my case represent the photo of a man. And I generated those images using Stable Diffusion here. And I generated a thousand images. Also in the same resolution, 512 by 512. And it's those images. So let's just copy this one here. And again, you don't have to do this. I just want to show the workflow if you want to use the classification data set, otherwise you leave this just blank. Now, under the prompts here, I want to specify a prompt with which I can tell Stable Diffusion to use whatever it's been trained on here. So in this case, my face. And as a standard for this, ZKZ has been very popular because that's a prompt for which there was very little to no data in the training, the initial training set for Stable Diffusion. So you're not overriding any concepts here. And also for the class prompts, and again, you don't have to use it. It's only necessary to fill this in if you decided to use the classification data set here. So for the class prompt, I want to broadly describe what I'm training here in order to have Stable Diffusion not override this class totally with my training data here. So let's go with photo of a man. All right, let's scroll down here. And finally, again, only if you want to use this classification data set here and this class prompt here, you'll have to enter the total number of classification or regularization images here. In my case, I'm going to use a thousand and that should be it. So let's hit train and bring up our command window here. And at the same time, let's also bring up our task manager and you can see the VRAM usage here on my RTX 4090. Now you can see that this is already using around 20 gigabytes here. So it's a lot. And one way of reducing this VRAM footprint would be not to use classification images, not to train using regularization images, which again, in most of my cases also resulted in a decent model. And in here, I definitely did something wrong because I only trained up for 12 steps and not 1200. And of course, under parameters here, I missed the training steps. So let's go 100 training steps per image and let's restart the training here. Again, bringing up my command prompt and my task manager here. And in my case, this is gonna take around 12 minutes for training, plus maybe an additional minute for saving out this checkpoint. And a very welcome coffee break later, we are done with training. So let's get back to the eye here and refresh our checkpoints here by clicking this. And then I should be able, let's just check the name again, Mo Portrait 01. I should be able to select this one here. Now, after that's been loaded, let's go to the text to image tab here and just create a short example in 768 by 768, 40 steps of DPM fast. Let's initialize it with maybe this seed, dial back the CFG a bit and let's generate maybe nine images here. So this has been loaded now and let's just prompt this with photo of ZKZ. Let's hit generate. And we can see, well, it spits out some faces that well, they resemble myself. Yeah, let's just interrupt this here. That's fine for me. Apparently this thing trained. 
So let's try creating something a bit different. And when preparing this video, I came up with this prompt here. Only thing I want to point out here are the parentheses. So each parenthesis emphasizes this concept here, which is my face. And in this case, I put four parentheses for opening and for closing around it. And also with Stable Diffusion 2.0, the negative prompting becomes very important. So this is my negative prompt. And I also increased the sampling steps to 50 and had this on a CFG of nine. So let's hit generate again. And yeah, I mean, I can see myself in some of those a bit more and some of those a bit less, but generally they all kind of resemble my face. So let's say I want to generate a bunch of them and then cherry pick the best of them. For that, I want to increase the batch count. And usually that's got an upper limit of 100. And you can already see mine has got an upper limit of 10,000. So how did I do that? Well, in my web UI installation folder here, there is this UI minus config.json. And if you right click on this and open it with some editor, in my case, Sublime, you can see that in this file, most of the user interface can be freely configured. In our case, we're gonna search for batch. And down here, we've got the text to image batch count and the maximum is where it's usually set to 100. And I just added two zeros. But then I want to continue searching for batch until I find the image to image batch count. And also I want to increase this one to my liking so that both in the text to image as well in the image to image context, I can increase this batch count drastically. In our case, let's output a thousand images here and then cherry pick the best of them. Let's just hit generate. And also let's have a look at our progress here in the background in the command window. For now, I'll interrupt this and continue this later as I want to go over training multiple concepts at the same time. So again, in Dream Booth, Let's create a new model, call this one my abstract portrait. Source checkpoint will also be the Stable Diffusion 2.0. Scheduler set to DDIM. So let's create that. So after that's been created, let's set our parameters. Training steps per image is 100. That's still right. Batch size one, class batch size one. Learning rate, six leading zeros, then a one. Also right resolution. And again, I want to train this at 512 by 512. And then under advanced, let's use 8-bit Atom, FP16 and Xformers. Good. Now under concepts, the first thing I want to train is my portraits. Same here, but I don't want to use a classification in here as I want to train two different concepts here. And for one, I prepared classification images and for the other one, I did not. And when mixing those, Dream Booth always returned an error message for me. So let's get rid of that. And also down here, let's delete the photo of a man class prompt and set the total number of class and regularization images to zero. And then in concept two, let's add another dataset directory for which I prepared this one, 32 images of abstract paintings of myself and my wife, which I created using Stable Diffusion 1.5. And the fact that if you train Stable Diffusion 1.5 in 512 by 512 pixels, and then request it to output a 768 by 768 pixel image, it creates some weird and wonderful artifacts. Combine this with a few lines of prompting and you end up with those, in my opinion, really nice abstract oil paintings. So I want to train Stable Diffusion 2.0 on this concept as well. So let's just use this path here and paste it under concept two in our dataset directory. Under the prompts, let's call this something short for abstract. So let's go with ABS and let's call it 768 in hope that this instance prompt isn't used by much else in Stable Diffusion's standard model. Let me just check. I think that's it for this one here. Let's just recheck the parameters. And yeah, I think we can train this one. Also, let's open up the command window in the background and of course the task manager. And as this has got a bit more images to train on, this will now take around 45 minutes. All right, so after about 45 minutes and one trip to the supermarket and the post office later, we are done training. So back to our web UI here, let's refresh our checkpoints and select my abstract portrait, what we just trained. So let's give it a while to load and go over to text to image. And here as well, I prepared some prompts. In this case, prompting for a close-up of an abstract minimalist portrait painting of me in the style of ABS abstract 768. And I put a bunch of parentheses around it to emphasize the style here that we trained. Also, let's add a bunch of negative prompts to this. And let's set this to the DDIM sampler. As this is an abstract painting, I found that it benefits from a lower sampling step count and also a bit of a looser CFG scale around four to five. All right. Let's hit generate and see what that outputs. And yeah, that's exactly the type of artwork I was looking for. And you can see this is also quite fast as we're using the DDIM sampler with only 30 sample steps here. So while that is generating a bunch of artworks from which I will select the best few, let me repeat what we did here. Under the extensions, the available ones that we loaded, we installed the Dream Booth extension here, restarted Stable Diffusion Web UI, 
then went over to Dream Booth, created a model here from our standard stable diffusion model, and then on the parameter set it up to take 100 training steps per image. No checkpointing here and no previews here, reduced the learning rate to a half of the original setting, then set the resolution for our training images according to the resolution of our training images. And then down here in the advanced tab, we checked the 8-bit Atom optimizer, as well as FP16 precision and the Xformers, for which we added the minus minus Xformers argument in our web UI user.bat, which we then used to start the web UI. Then under the concepts, we loaded up our data set by pointing it to the folder where our data set resides. Then optionally, we used a classification data set in our example of a thousand male photos, and then set an instance prompt, ZKZ is the kind of agreed upon default on the internet, and also a class prompt, but only if we use the classification data set, in our case, photo of a man. For a second concept, we pointed the dataset directory to our respective training images. Again, those were the abstract paintings, no classification data, set directory, and an instance prompt here as well. For both concept one and concept two, I, in the end, did not use classification data sets here. So, I set the total number of class reg images to zero. If you want to use the classification data set here or for the portrait, make sure to set it to the number of images you have in that directory. Then we trained the model and after it was done, refreshed our checkpoints here and then started prompting over here. Just let's bring up our command prompt and we can see this is still running. And also if I check my output directory here, I can see all my beautiful abstract artworks coming in here. So I'll leave that running. And after we created a bunch of images here, let's have a look at them. Let's start with the last one and flip through them to see if there are any that we like or any that we particularly dislike. And yeah, I can see myself in some of those. Some are very abstract, but it's exactly the style I was going for. However, these images only are 768 by 768. And usually you want an image with a tiny bit more resolution. And we also have means of doing that within Stable Diffusion's web UI. Let's pull this one to the side and minimize our output folder and go to extras here. And in here, I can scale up images, either single images or batches, where I can drop multiple files or even whole directories. In our case, I just wanna work on a single image and I'll just drag and drop this one in here. And I wanna resize this to four times its original size. And in my previous attempts of doing that, the best results I got was by mixing SWINIR and RESR GAN. And all I have to do now is hit generate. Let's just maybe bring up our command window here. And you can see when I first enable some of these rescalers here, Stable Diffusion's web UI downloads a bunch of checkpoints, a bunch of dependencies in the background. So when you're first doing that, it might take a while, but after that's downloaded, we start resizing our image. So now after a few seconds or about a minute, that's done. So let's look at this image, which hides in the output directory and not in the text to images, but in the extra images here, where I've got both a PNG and a JPEG of that thing. So let's have a look at the JPEG here and let's just zoom in a bit here to the original size, 100%, and we can see it resulted in okay quality. Maybe adding a bit of an unsharp mask or post sharpening, but overall, that's not bad. And this is how you generate those extremely popular portraits in any style you want, just by going to text to image and prompting for, well, something after you've trained your model using Dream Booth. And if you like what we're doing, want to support us, or even get access to more in-depth courses, consider becoming a patron of ours, as it is through the help of our patrons that we are able to run in Tagma the way we do, with a very special thank you going to Supermassive Games, Jellyfish Pictures, The Mill, Method Studios, Electric Theater, Via, Pixonic, Random42, Rodeo Effects, Side Effects, Illusion, Styleframe, and Rafik Anadol Studio. Thanks so much for your support. And as always, we're intrigued to see your artwork. And until next week, it is cheers and goodbye.